Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This is a Caribbean Flamingo. It's a 10 by 7 inch painting, so it's on the small side. I got photo reference for this bird at the Toledo Zoo, which has a nice population of uh, flamingos. And with a 400 millimeter lens, you could get in pretty close to uh, get kind of detailed shots of the birds preening and taking naps and other uh, fun behaviors. I started off by first getting off the bird and leaving the background blank, and I pre-wet the paper to put in a, the background. Initially, I had planned on doing something fairly similar to the photo that I had, where it kind of had the muted tones of the other flamingos behind it. And uh, so I went about doing that for the first pass of the, uh, the wash. And as I started looking at this, I thought, well, this could work, this could be interesting, be a kind of monochromatic painting. But as I uh, hit it with the hairdryer and thought about it more and more, I, I decided that I wanted to go in a different direction. I wanted to uh, have the painting be a little bit more bold. And so I threw away the uh, realistic version of what was gonna, what I was seeing in the photo and decided to put a much more fiery, um, colors in the background and so I went about mixing from an orange to a medium red to a cooler red um, with alizarin and I washed these in several times on doing a wet on dry paper wash over the, uh, the background trying to build that intensity and I did this in several passes There's a little bit of streaking in the bottom end of this, and so I uh, addressed that trying to uh, come in with a little bit more alizarin to deepen that corner to get the gradient. And uh, that was a little bit better. And so I went about putting another passive color in to smooth things out a little bit more. And there was a little bit of a, uh, a glob of the paint in the lower corner that I addressed later, but for the most part I was happy with that. Peeled off the frisket and then transferred the rest of the sketch in. Once that sketch was transferred, I went about bringing in the lightest local colors of the uh, flamingo. You can see the photo reference above kind of had a gray-green in places to the pink of the flamingos. And most of the work here was done with a number six round brush. And you can kind of see that I'm glazing in a lot of uh, colors with light washes and just making many repeated uh, passes over this. When you think of a flamingo, you think of a pink bird. And, and in actuality, the more I looked at these, the, uh, the more I start pushing it more toward the oranges and pinks as opposed to just the uh, the pinks. And some of it's that they're, you know, in nature the birds are eating these little uh, shrimpy things and that those dyes from the their diet brings that, is brought into their feathers. And so if you think of a shrimpy color that uh, actually usually describes the flamingo a little bit better. And in captivity, the flamingos sometimes, because they're not eating the freshest foods, don't have as bright colors as they would in the wild. So I usually brag the colors up a little bit when I do these, um, just to make it look a little bit more natural and a little less, uh, I don't want to say zooey, because I don't think zooey is a word, but you know what I mean. So it looks a little more natural. The eyes of these birds are really pretty and it's interesting that they have kind of a yellowy green eye which contrasts all those those pinky peachy colors so beautifully. They're really spectacular birds. And in doing the background, as I did that I kept in mind the colors of the beak and tried to reflect some of those colors in the background that I put in that it would have the uh, the beaky kind of background colors. So it would kind of be a reflection of what's in the the main part of the painting and the beak of the bird and kind of 
go together well. Make it a little more uh, exciting. You can see I'm glazing in with some oranges and peaches now just to kind of bring all those tones together. And it was just many, many little layers to build that depth. Part of what struck me with this image was as the bird was preening, it would lift up the feathers and fan them out. And you'd have this, these layers of, you know, the light filtering through the, the pluffed up feathers. And it was just so beautiful to see that depth of color in the, in the shadowy areas as it got deeper. And it was a challenge to render, but it just made for such a, a pretty shape as it went through that, kind of this repeating pattern of those feathers arcing over and that kind of also goes in with the arc of the neck it was just really neat uh, patterns and designs and I probably had you know 50 60 photos to choose from when I was trying to decide which one would be the flamingo painting to do from that trip to the zoo and this one won it had a uh, I just kind of liked the way it had that echoing pattern of the neck and then the feathers on the uh, shoulder of the bird and the beak that it just kind of had all these neat overlapping kind of repeating patterns that made for a fun, fun image. And you can see how orange things get at times with the, the pink bird. Interestingly, the, the, the Latin name of the, the flamingo is Phonosoptera, which means phoenix bird. And so uh, it, uh, you know, I thought of that as I was doing this, that it kind of did look like the bird rising out of the flames like a phoenix. As I moved along in the painting, I started using less of the number six round brush and I moved to number twos. And for the finer details around the eye and the beak, I would switch to a 10 aught brush. But I'd say the majority of the detail work was done with a sharp number two round brush. For the shadows, I started moving in with the cooler reds like alizarins and um, some pinks and bringing in a little purple here and there for the really darkest shadows. It was a fun painting to work on. It's just such a, a pretty bird. And, you know, design-wise, it's kind of a, a straightforward bird portrait, but with all those repeating patterns, I thought it was kind of a, a fun and different thing to work on. At the last part, I was cleaning up a little bit of those, uh, the part where the wash went uh, a little crazy with the, the alizarin crimson, trying to even that out. So a signature, and I called it uh, pretty much done. So there you go, a Caribbean flamingo, a 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. I hope you enjoyed it. If you get a chance, have a peek at the website and the blog.